been reading a lot of devotionals lately about how close God wants us to be to Him. I just, I just want us to understand that God is not somebody far away. He's not the old man upstairs. When I hear that, it just drives me up crazy, crazier than I already am. But He is personal. He's intimate. He is here. He's not somewhere else. He's not up, upstairs. He's here with us. In this psalm, we see the intimacy of God. Psalm 139, 1 through 6. It describes God's presence with us. It shows how he cares for us. He shows how he knows all about us and still loves us anyway. Psalm 30, 39, 139 is important for all of us to read. And you ought to take time to read it. Just see how much he cares for you and how close he wants to be for you. Uh, so today I'm going to be speaking on Psalm 139, but one, we're going to read 1, one through 6. And then we will continue on. Oh Lord, you have searched me, and I know me, and know me. You know when I sit down, and when I rise up. You understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down, and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there was a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before, laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain it. We can't attain his, you know, we can't earn it. It's given to us. It's given to us by his grace. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. I just prayed as I prayed this morning when I got out of bed that the Holy Spirit would take my hand and guide me through this morning, through this message, that I would be empowered, bold, and confident in what I have to say because it comes from you through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Thank you that you know me and love me anyway. Because I know that I am not worthy of your love, but by your grace, you love me. And I thank you. Thank you for your presence here with us this morning. May everything that we've done, everything we're going to do, will be done to your glory, to your honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. He knows our thoughts. He knows our ways. He knows when we get up and when we sit down. He knows my laziness, but he still cares for me. He knows how often I miss the mark, but yet he loves me. God loves us, and he loves us so much that he was willing to send his only begotten son to come to this earth in human form, to take your sins and my sins and hang them on an old rugged cross. He became our perfect sacrifice. The perfect lamb became our sacrifice on that cross. Jesus died <coughs> for you and me. And when you take it personally, he died for me. I think the God of the universe loved me so much that if I was the only person here on earth, he would have still come, sent Jesus to die for me. And that's what you can say for yourself. He did that just for us. He's our blessed Redeemer. Salvation is with God's plan. God's plan is salvation for everybody. So none would perish. He's our, Jesus is our Savior and our Lord. But you know, another great desire for God is to have intimacy with his children. 
When God created Adam and Eve, he created them to have fellowship with him, to, to be in that intimate relationship that they want, needed to be and have to be with him. But through their ignorance, through their sinful ways, they decided that they want to be kings of their own kingdom. They wanted to be God. Sin entered into the world. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God now. None of us are apart from that sin. But years later, God sent Jesus Christ into this world to restore that relationship that he wanted to have with us. The broken hope, the broken relationship was restored through Jesus Christ in his death, burial, resurrection, the gospel, the good news. And in Romans 8, 14 through 17, we see how the Holy Spirit interacted in this and called us to be adopted into the family of God. For all are being led by the Spirit of God. These are sons of God. We become sons and daughters of God. We become his children. And we, we look at our lives and we look at the things that we have. Receive the spirit of slavery leading to fear again. But you have received the spirit of adoption, sons by which we cry. I really didn't know how adoption really worked. We had a family in, in Cuba that had adopted a daughter because they didn't think they were going to have any children. And guess what? They had a son after that. But Adoption means that they are just as important as that born son. She was had everything that was offered to him was hers. She was the heir. You can't reject them. You can't push them away. They are adopted. God adopted us into a family that cannot be broken. We are adopted through his beautiful, loving care, through the Spirit of God. And we have this Spirit about us. And privilege. I don't know about you, but I, I'm so thankful that I am a child of God. And it's all through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. If you read John 1, 12, it says, and you be, had the privilege of being called children of God. I don't know about you, but I'm a child of the God who created this universe, who gives us his sunshine today, who gives us rain tomorrow, who gives us everything, but we are his children. How many of you love your children? And you're very thankful for them. And you, you wanted the best for them. You want that intimacy. We have been blessed, well, it, it happened that Heather didn't have a job, but it still, she came just when we needed her most. And when she would help me get things together, she would help me with Judy, and then she would help me with Rob, and all these things, and she would be there for us. And she didn't even have to do anything, just be there. Intimacy. Aren't you glad when you have your child just love you and you have that empathy, that care? There's certain things that help us. But this one thing also, the spirit of, or the received the spirit of slavery, spirit of adoption, sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. That word Abba means daddy. That's intimate, personal. God is not some far off deity. He's 
personal. He's daddy. The Jewish term for that is papa. Papa. I don't know why, but I've been thinking about my dad lately and how much, oh, he, would, he drank a lot of beer and he did a lot of stuff, but he was always there for me. He taught me how to mow grass. He played Mark Twain and, and Tom Sawyer. He taught me how to, he said, watch this. This is how you do it. He gave me the, the push mower and said, here, just like that. And just make it that far in before you. He taught me a lot of things. He taught me how to fish, how to hunt, how to do. But it was the closest that I had with my dad, even, even in the time when he was not fully capable of doing it. He still I was taking two places that he always went close by. The Bluebird Tavern and Dolby Towers. That's two good places that he went. But you know what? He always, you know what that taught me? I don't want to be like that. I don't want to drink. I don't want to be that. I remember one time Heather was, my dad had his beer next to him and Heather went over and he said, you want a drink? And she took a drink and said, no, spit it out and said, Grandpa, how can you drink this yucky stuff? We are taught, Jesus taught us to love our Father and call him and the Spirit gives us an opportunity to call him Daddy, to call him Papa, to come near to him and let him have our life. We were bought at a price that we can't even understand. It was the blood of Jesus. We do not no longer belong to ourselves. We belong to God. Three things that I believe that will help us to have that close, intimate relationship with God continually. The first one is commitment. God was committed to us. He created us to be who he wanted us to be. And he saw the sin that we had in our life, but he was committed to bring that sin out of us. And he sent his son for God to demonstrate his love in, in Romans 5, 8, demonstrated his love that he sent his son to die for us even while we were yet sinners. That's commitment. God had a commitment to us to help us, to guide us, to direct us. That's what Psalm 139 says. He knows all about us. He knows everything. His eyes are on us. His hands are upon us. He is all around us. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He's always there. He gave us Jesus Christ, our blessed Redeemer, to pay a price that we couldn't pay. For salvation to have that intimacy with him. You cannot have intimacy with God until you have intimacy with Jesus Christ. When you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you have a personal relationship with God. Because God and Jesus abide with one another. And when we have the abiding with Jesus, we abide with them. God sent his son, his spirit. He was committed to us, so he sent his spirit to live in us, to comfort us, to help us, to strengthen us, to empower us, to deliver us, encourage us, and also to convict us of our sin. He is so committed to us, he was willing to send his son, willing to send his spirit to live with us. We have the Spirit of God. We do not have the Spirit of humidity. We have the Spirit of God in us with power. Now, our commitment. We must commit ourselves and have that desire to be more like Jesus, more like Him every day. A desire in our heart to have Jesus be in us that we may be, people may see Jesus in us. We need to draw nearer to him. 
nearer to God. I mean, all of us have strayed and gone our own way. But God always looks for us and he always brings us back. He never lets that one sheep go. He, he would leave the 99 and go get that one. And that's you and me. We desire to read his word. His word is his word. It's not just the Bible. It's not just a book. It's God's word. I read this morning in another devotional that 400 years, the prophecies came true in Jesus Christ. But the Bible just proves how important and how true the Bible is. From one extreme to another, it is all without error. It's his word. We need to read it, get into it, meditate on it, let it get into us, then we need to spread it out, live it out in our life. His will, his ways, his plans, his promises. We need to let people know that God has a plan. God got better ways than we do, better thoughts than we do. He said, don't be conformed to this world, but let your mind be conformed to the spirit of God. <coughs> and we need to hang on to those promises. There's so many promises I can't tell you how many there are. You just look at the Bible and you'll see the promise every every time. I promise never to leave you in the darkness. Never forsake you. Lo, I am with you always. That's commitment. God is committed to us. In his word, in his life, his love, in Jesus, and in the Spirit. The next thing is communication. The Bible is our word from God. He says, pray. Ask, and you shall receive. Prayer leads to a deeper relationship with God. Prayer leads into a rejoicing, realizing that God is who he is. We're not just praying to some temple. We're not praying to some idol. We are praying to God of the universe, the God who is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omnipotent. He knows everything. He knows everything. Prayer. It's a privilege given to us by the death of Jesus Christ. The veil between us and God was rent from top to bottom. Now we have complete access to God the Father in all of his glory. When we pray, he hears. When we pray, he hears and he answers. Also, when we pray, Communication is a two-way street. We need to listen to him. When we pray, listen to what he has to say. You will receive a blessing like you've never received before. Listen to him. I don't know if Kevin's ever done this, but I, I have been working on a sermon. And all at once my eyes shut. <laughs> In other words, I went to sleep thinking that God's going to give me the rest of my word. Charles Stanley said one time, folks, I know, preachers, I know that you fall asleep when you're working on your sermon sometimes. And, you, and you'll expect him to give you the words. There's got to be something up there first. There's got to be something in your heart first. He's not just going to give you something without you having done something. Reading your word. Pray. Communication. Pray fervently, as it says in James, with energy, with power, with the power that comes through the Holy Spirit. 
when you don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit will pray for you because he knows your heart. <coughs> Prayer. Praying to God is such a blessing. There's so many people who say, oh, I pray every day, I pray this and that, but they're not praying to the right person. You've got to pray to a holy God that has opened the, that Jesus has opened the way to us, for us. Everybody ought to pray, amen? They just need to know how to pray. Daniel gives you some ways to pray. Other people give you, Psalms give you ways, but pray. Pray at least in the morning and say, thank you for getting me up. Thank you that I'm able to get my legs over the side of the bed and stand up slowly. And I'm unstable sometimes, but I get up. And then every night, pray thanking him for getting you through that day. Protecting you, guiding you. We don't know how many times we're protected and we don't even know it. You realize that? God knows what we're getting. And he knows that there's people, Satan is trying to get, get us, and God protects us. <sighs> Communication is so important. I love it. When my kids, when my grandkids talk to us. Communication. Talk to us. Not with their phones going on all the time. I was, of course you know, I was in Germany for 19 months. And the first Christmas I was there, I missed my mom. You ever miss your mom? I miss my mom. I was a mom and boy, that's for sure. So I decided I would call, have a collect call if mom would take it. Now this is back in 1966, and it cost $20 for me to talk to my mom. But she accepted the $20. She didn't have it, probably, but she accepted the call because she wanted to talk to Bobby, her little boy. And she was thankful that I didn't go to Vietnam. And she told me that. She said, I'm glad that you didn't have to go to Vietnam. You wouldn't have been able to call me like this. Communication opens the door to wonderful blessings and life and love and joy and peace and also comfort when you're sorrowful, when you have pain. Praying, talking to God, he hears, he answers. You have to listen to him. Sometimes I listen while I'm dreaming. And God talks to me while I'm dreaming. And he's given me messages while I was dreaming. He's given me thoughts of what's going to take place the next day. And I didn't even, I'll come to something I say, I've seen this before. Somewhere, somehow I've been here. It's because I dreamed it. He's always talking, but we have to listen. That's still small voices listening and talking to us. And then we have to obey. Trust him and obey. Sing. Talk to God. And he, then you have to obey. Obedience. Prayer is more than just praying. It's action. Doing something. Listening. When we pray, we are to pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18 says, Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Pray constantly. Have prayer on your mind. Be a prayer warrior. When you say, I'm going to pray for you, pray for them. I think about that sometimes when I'm on the internet and somebody says, pray for this person. I pray for them because I don't even know them, most of them. But I pray for them. Not because my prayers are so wonderful, but because God is so wonderful. 
had a man who was a businessman, very well off. And he would call me in the middle of the night or call me at some time and say, Bob, I need you to pray for me because your prayers go up higher than mine do. And I said, Jimmy, I said, my prayers don't go up higher. They just go to the rep directly to God. He would call me one time. He was in Lawrence Hospital. Bad shape. He told his wife, said, call Bob Knight and have him come down here and pray. I live. Didn't live that close. But I did. I went down and prayed for him. He said, oh, I feel so much better when you're here and you pray. Folks, it's not our prayers. It's God who answers our prayers because we're being obedient to him and doing what he says to do. Prayer is important. Prayer opens doors that we can't even imagine. Pray. Seek his face. Seek his way. Seek his word. And then lastly, it's constant thanksgiving. In everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Giving thanks is so important. I gave thanks to somebody one day and said, what do you thank me for? I said, just for listening to me. Sometimes we just need to be thankful for things that we don't know about. I'm thankful that Heather's got a job and going to work tomorrow. I'm thankful for my my son being home, even though it, they haven't got his pump working right because they're missing a part and trying to get it. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful that Judy's getting better and stronger. I'm thankful for my life that I'm able to do what I do. I'm thankful that my doctor said I've got a strong heart. We find but a strong heart. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful for you guys for being so accepting of me. I'm not worthy of that. But yet God gives it to me and I'm thankful. In verses 13 and 14 of Psalm 139 it says, For you formed me in my inner parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. will give thanks to you I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. I'm thankful for who I am because nobody else has got my DNA. You know, they say that you got a twin out there somewhere. He's not like me, and you'd probably be thankful that he's not like me. Bobby Knight, <laughs> he's not like me. People, I, somebody said that in the hospital, yeah. oh, are you the coach from Indiana? I said, no. I said, he throws chairs, I throw pews. And he, and they, uh, they said, oh. I said, I'm a preacher. He, oh, okay. There's nobody like you, and there's nobody like me. We're unique. We have a, our own DNA. When they did a genetic, is it that what they call it? survey of my life when I had leukemia. They found out things in my, me that I didn't know about. One of the things that he said, you got a healing gene. I said, I know it's Jesus. Everybody got who they are, who they are. This big body of mine, God gave it to me. I was born weighing 200 pounds because I don't remember being under 200 pounds. But I know I wasn't because I was a little boy. I was a little baby. And I know that God just brought me up to be who I am, where I am. And as Papa said, I am who I am and that's all that I am. I'm me. Take me or leave me. Love me or hate me. Constantly keeping us in his loving care. I will give thanks to 
to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows everything about us. My frame was hidden from you and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance and your book were all written in the days. He knows all about us and he knows why I'm the way I am. We need to live a life of gratitude. Thanking God for everything we have. You know, sometimes I tease about, I wish I had a Corvette. Nah, I don't need a Corvette. I've got a Ford Escape that gets me where I'm going and back. I've got a Chevy pickup. It gets me there and back most of the time. Folks, I've got more than I can ever give thanks for. I am blessed. How about you? Continually give thanks him for his loving care, his thoughtful eyes watching us, his hand lifting us, teaching us. Search me, O God, and know my heart. <coughs> Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there's any hurtful way in me and lead me into everlasting way. God wants us to be protected from our enemy. And folks, we have an enemy every day trying to destroy us. Satan tries to destroy our faith, trying to destroy our life, but aren't you glad you have God with you and God's presence? He's committed to you. He loves you. You are important to him. And that intimacy that he wants, he's committed to have that with you if you will just turn yourself over to him through Jesus Christ. Intimate. He wants to talk to you. He wants to hear from you. little boy prayed one time and said, God, I pray for you. Because if something happens to you, we're in trouble. And that's so true. We need God every minute of the day. I do. I don't know about you, but I need him every minute of the day. Everything that goes on in my life, I need him. I want to be committed to him. I want to be talking to him, communicating with him, listening to him, obeying him, and following him. And giving thanks through it all. We have a God who cares for us more than we can even imagine. Thank you, God, for everything. He cares for us. I gave you the wrong verse. It should be verse 7. He cares for us. Thank you for being here listening to me. I pray that you will desire that intimate personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you will have that desire to read his word, understand who he is and what he's doing in your life. Look for those promises. Stand on the word of God and it's true. In this chaotic world, we need something that is truthful and honest and steadfast and that's God's word. And talk to God. He, he loves you. He loves to hear from you. Talk to him and realize who he is. And realize he wants to do what is right for your life. I thank you, God, for the blessings of life itself. I thank you for the most precious gift you give us every day salvation. Every time I get up, I know that I'm saved. Not because of anything I have done, but because of everything Jesus has done for me. I thank you that you are my God, my Father, my Daddy, my Papa. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells in me, guides me, comforts me, helps me all the way, and directs my life. I'm thankful for the grace that you have given to me to be able to preach to a wonderful congregation that loves you. Father, I pray that you will help us 
to be committed to you as much as you're committed to us. That means giving our whole being to you. Turn our life over to you. Let us release ourselves of ourselves and give to you. No more selfishness. Just godliness and righteousness that comes from Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you want to be that kind of God, to be intimate with us in every way. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Maybe you have something you would need to pray about today.